topping up the caffeine levels before we receive uh, delivery, which are being delivered to Mullum Engineering because our, our, our production site out there at Main Arm Road is a little bit soggy at the moment. I'm happy with the quality of the poles, they look great. Yep. There's a bit of cleaning up to do, well, there's quite a bit of dirt on them, so that has to be uh, pressure cleaned. And there's a bit of damp, slight, slight bit of damaged surfaces, so there'll be a little bit of sand and um, grinding and stuff to detail each one before we paint them. So. Every day, that's what they're good at. Stand there and just let it hold. Well, there's a kind of a point where it's unnecessary. We just want to get all the loose stuff off. Yeah. And the rest of it can just be, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So when did you first have the idea how many years is it ago? Oh, it's about eight years ago. Wow. But it was, in those days, uh, the council wasn't ready for these sort of things. So, um, you know, council did not have a public art policy in those days. And it was fairly timely, sometimes soon after that, uh, the public art Project reference group for the public for making public art policy was formed. And somehow I got invited to participate in that, and that went on for two years. And then after that, there was a, another year of uh, how to implement the policy. So I was in, invited to stay with that committee for that part of the process. And then at the end of that, I thought, well, now it's time for some public art. And I went to the Chamber of Commerce and told them my ideas, and it was immediately well received. So to sum it up a bit, uh, public art is art and politics. I wouldn't sum it up like that. No, no? I would actually say that uh, public art is subject to political 
uh, processes and, and pressures. But it is the, it's the, the uh, political process isn't embedded in the art. The art has its own life, preferably.